Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today a different type of video. We're gonna go through the top 10 differences between Islam and Christianity. These two major world religions share historical connections, yet each has distinct beliefs and practices that shape the lives of billions. Today we're gonna explore key disparities, shedding a light on the unique aspects that define Christianity and Islam. Guys, before we jump into the video, if you enjoy the content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Number one, the concept of God. In Islam, God is referred to as Allah and is considered the singular, indivisible creator of the universe. This concept of oneness in Islam is called Tawhid. In Christianity, God is not singular, he is a triune God. This concept is called the Trinity, which includes God as the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Number two, religious texts. The holy book of Islam is called the Quran. It is believed to be the literal word of God as revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Quran is much shorter than the Bible. Indeed, it is even shorter than the New Testament. However, the Quran is believed to entail only revelation from God. Christianity, on the other hand, relies on the Bible, which includes the Old Testament, which is shared with Judaism, and the New Testament. As already mentioned, the Bible therefore is much, much longer than the Quran. However, the Bible entails many stories and it is a compilation of different books authored by many different figures, some of which are anonymous authors over the centuries. Number three, the prophets. While both religions acknowledge many common prophets, Islam considers Muhammad as the final and last prophet The prophetic view in Islam is that all the prophets came with the same message, worship one God alone. The Quran states that we do not distinguish between the messengers, because they are all sent by God. Christianity, on the other hand, denies Muhammad as a true prophet, and moreover, Jesus is not only seen as a prophet, but also as God. He is the central figure of salvation in Christianity. He is seen as part of the triune Godhead. Number four, view of Jesus. In Islam, Jesus, known as Isa, is revered as a prophet and the Messiah. Islam believes that Jesus is born of a miraculous birth by the Virgin Mary. However, in Islam, Jesus is not divine and has not been crucified. He is seen as a mighty messenger of God. In Christianity, Jesus is regarded as the Son of God, the literal Son of God, part of the Holy Trinity, and his crucifixion and resurrection are central to Christian beliefs. Based upon certain Bible passages, such as John 14, 6, Christians really believe that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. That means that Christians believe that without faith in Jesus, you are condemned to hell. Number five, salvation. Islam emphasizes submission to God's will and adherence to the five pillars for salvation. For people that don't know, Islam translated literally means submission to God, submitting yourself to the will of God. We have to commit to our religious duties and always repent, but ultimately salvation is up to the Creator. In Christianity, on the other hand, the emphasis lays on, yet again, Jesus Christ. He is the means of salvation. Often this theology is described as faith in Christ alone. Many Christians believe that they do not have to follow any laws, that they do not have to adhere to a specific prayer routine or the abstinence of certain foods. They believe that faith in Christ alone will give them salvation. 
Number six, places of worship. Muslims worship in mosques, while Christians gather in churches. The Islamic prayer is typically led by an imam, while Christian services are led by pastors, priests, or ministers. Number seven, the day of worship. Muslims observe Friday as their congregational day of worship. We call this Juma. Christians, on the other hand, traditionally observe Sunday as the day of worship, commemorating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number eight, religious practices. Islam follows the five pillars, including Shahada, the declaration of faith, Salah, the prayer, Zakat, charity, fasting, especially during the holy month of Ramadan, and Hajj, which is the pilgrimage to Mecca. Christianity, on the other hand, has a lot of rituals, for example, baptism, communion, veneration of icons, etc. But it does not have a strict religious obligation that you have to perform. You do not have to fast. You do not have to go on a pilgrimage. You do not have to give to charity. You do not have to pray five times per day. All of this leads back to the concept of faith in Christ alone. Christians truly subscribe to the idea that their faith, their belief in Christ is greater than any action they could perform. And number nine, the role of women. People would of course assume that the wearing of the hijab is the main difference between Christian and Muslim women. And of course it is true that it is recommended for Muslim women to stay modest and observe the hijab. However, the main difference for women in Islam and Christianity, contrary to popular belief, is equality in spiritual value. Islam emphasizes the fundamental spiritual equality of men and women. Both are considered equal in the sight of God and are accountable for their actions. Of course, in this world, in this dunya, we have different roles to play. But the spiritual equality is key here. The woman is not seen as something lesser. In Christianity, on the other hand, the assumption is that Eve was created out of the rib of Adam and henceforth is a lesser creature. This perspective was held by the church for thousands of years and many Christians still hold that perspective. The man is seen as a creature directly created by God and the woman is seen as a lesser creature because it is taken out of Adam's rib. And this is why we can find in the tradition of Islam and in various Muslim countries that women may hold leadership positions in education, business and other fields. In the Christian world, however, because it was not an integral part within Christianity, the West needed a sexual revolution, feminism, etc. in order to give women some rights, secular rights, that is. And number 10, the afterlife. In Islam, we have the Day of Judgment, the Yam al qiyamah Islam teaches that all individuals will be resurrected on the Day of Judgment, where their deeds will be evaluated by Allah, by God himself. You also have the concept of heaven, which is called Jannah. Those who have lived righteous lives and followed the teachings of Islam are promised eternal bliss in Jannah, described as a paradise with rivers, gardens and other delights. As the opposite to heaven, we of course have hell as well in Islam, which is called Jahannam. Those who have committed grave sins and rejected the guidance of Islam may face punishment in Jahannam, a place of torment and suffering. However, there is one specific aspect that is emphasized within Islam and that is accountability. Islam emphasizes individual accountability where every action, whether big or small, will be taken into account on the Day of Judgment. All of your good deeds, all of your sins will be put on the scale and they will be evaluated by Allah. Just as Islam, Christianity also teaches the concept of a final judgment where all individuals will stand before God and their actions will be reviewed. Of course, there is heaven in Christianity. However, it implies that those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their savior and lived according to Christian teachings are promised eternal life in heaven, a place of communion with God. We obviously find hell within the Christian theology as well. Christianity teaches the existence of hell as a place of separation from God for those who have rejected him or lived in disobedience. So as you can already hear, the concepts of heaven and hell in the judgment day are fairly similar. However, instead of accountability, in Christianity we find redemption through faith. Many Christian denominations emphasize the role of faith in Jesus Christ as the means of salvation and entrance into heaven. 
So that means all of your good or bad deeds ultimately are meaningless if you do not put your faith in Jesus Christ. All right, guys, this is it for today's top 10. Please let me know in the comment section what you think about this format. If you enjoy it, I'm going to make more top 10s for you, inshallah. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support. And now, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.